this video is actually for the vegans and I know y'all think I hate vegans and I hate the vegan lifestyle this is just me trying to help you because the vegans are not going to help you with this they're not going to warn you about this all the vegans should have a video about this topic and it is oxalates oxalates will damage you if you go overboard with the oxalates it will shorten the amount of time that you can be vegan and I want to share my experience with oxalates and why I have this picture of spinach behind this evil demon monster looking thing with green eyes and this sharp blade. So I went vegan in February of 2012 and for the first couple of years I did not have any major issues with veganism. None other than some fatigue and my skin being dull and dry. But those are minor compared to the things that came on down the line. So in 2014 that winter, like the very end of that year, so I was close to three years vegan at that time. I decided to start drinking a bunch of green smoothies because, you know, it's supposed to be healthy. And a lot of the people that I saw on YouTube having green smoothies, their skin didn't look as dull and dry as mine did. So I was making green smoothies. And there are also vegans on YouTube, mostly raw vegans, that say you have to have a pound of greens a day. And that's how the primates are able to do it. That's how they're able to um, live off of predominantly plants. Never mind, they eat meat, but <laughs> that's another story. Pound of greens. Gorillas eat so much greens and they get a variety of greens. So I'm like, that sounds like a good idea. I think I'll bump up my greens in the form of a green smoothie. So, and when I tell you that you don't want to overdo it with these oxalates, please don't overdo it. And I'm going to tell you my experience that you don't have to do this to yourself. But... I would make green smoothies and I never had a super expensive blender so I never put anything I never put everything in all at once I would first blend up the greens down to a green liquid because if you mix everything all at, at one time I noticed my blender would not chop up all the greens and I would be chewing on chunks of spinach so put like I would put like a cup of water in the blender and then I would take a big handful of spinach put it in the blender blend it up it would turn into green water and I'm like you know what I gotta get in more greens because obviously I need minerals I was having some muscle twitching which which is also a super minor thing to me, muscle twitching all the time. Arch of my foot was twitching for so long, months. And so I'm like, maybe I need more magnesium, more minerals. So I put in a handful of greens. It turns into green water, if you've ever done this as a vegan. Green water. And then you can add in another handful and blend that up and it will turn into green water. And like You can add so much spinach. I would add in at least like four handfuls of spinach. I would go through one of those big carton um, things of spinach every two days just cram it in the spinach you blend it down to a liquid cram in some more blend down to a liquid and then at the end you can add some fruit don't do this okay because I in my ex-veganism now I heard a vegan somewhere an ex-vegan saying that they had the experience of having the feeling of oxalates in their mouth and when they described it I realized that was what I was feeling when I would have these intense green smoothies that I thought were so healthy the feeling of oxalates in your mouth, it literally feels very astringent. It feels like the top layer of your tongue and the roof of your mouth is getting peeled off. It's a very acidic feeling, even though it's supposed to be a super alkaline smoothie. It just feels like your mouth feels raw. So do not do this. And I want to talk about the result of this, um, this horrible thing that I did to myself. Why do I have this picture of the produce section of the grocery store? Because this is where it started. I was in the market, huge cart full of bananas, you know, potatoes, sweet potatoes, got my bags of, huge bags of basmati rice, beans, legumes, little carton of pecans, little carton of um, Brazil nuts, you know, got all this stuff going on, grabbed my two huge cartons, huge family size cartons of spinach salad, huge cartons that will last me for only like four days, two days each carton got those together for my green smoothies and felt like you know what, I gotta go to the bathroom but I walked around and got the rest of the stuff that I needed like the tomatoes the um, pasta the pasta sauce and all that stuff and before I checked out I parked my cart in front of the bathroom went to the bathroom everything was all good peeing at the very end when it was time for the pee to basically stop flowing felt a sharp needle like pain sharp needle like pain for only a split second and then it stopped and it 
and it wasn't like when I had my kidney stones from veganism but they were I'm surprised I had such small minute kidney stones because they never gave me any kidney pain no back pain no nothing so I didn't even know it was a kidney stone I thought it was UTI until I went to the hospital but <laughs> stood up no more pain wash my hands left I didn't know what was up um, the pain was just so it was just like a split instant of pain and then it stopped so I checked out went home and that night is when the absolute horror started. That is when that green-eyed demon with a blade came for me. Well, this is what oxalate crystals look like, and this is what it will feel like you are peeing out if you go overboard with all the oxalates. And when you go to the ER, they are not like... I think I've mentioned this in other videos and vegans, they come in the comments, well, what did they tell you caused your kidney stones when you went to the hospital? How did they tell you to prevent future kidney stones? That is not how the ER is. If you've ever... Maybe you're a vegan, you haven't hit that that point where you have to go to the ER every week but <laughs> they people in the ER are not there to help you figure out your life and try to help you um, prevent issues in the future and try to give you counseling and all of that they are there to just basically get you out of there alive and able to make it to a doctor's appointment if you need one in the future like if you, they just need you to get out of there alive that's the point of the ER just to keep you alive and not in excruciating pain so they will give you pain medicine and when they scan you and tell you you got a kidney stone and it's, especially if it's really small like mine was they will say no intervention is necessary you just need some hydration and you just need to pee it out because it's very small and I think when they scanned me they were probably seeing the second stone because I had another kidney stone like um a couple weeks later and the first one was basically out when I went into the ER I was basically I never had any pain associated with my kidney stones until it was basically right there at the entrance ready to come out and if you go into the ER with a super tiny, minute uh, kidney stone that is basically out, they're not there to give you counseling and tell you how to prevent kidney stones in the future because it's so tiny, they probably think you're being a baby. But maybe this is different from those, um, maybe people, um, I've heard people get kidney stones from proteins. That does not sound as painful as even one shard of this oxalate crystal. I don't care if it's so minute they can't even see it. If you get one of these little shards trying to come out of your um, urethra, you will be in excruciating, stabbing pain. And I want to tell you what happened when I went home after being at the supermarket and having that needle-like pain. I was debating with myself whether or not to go to the hospital because of this, because I thought it was probably just a urinary tract infection. However, there was blood. I noticed there was blood, and that is highly abnormal. The feeling of a kidney stone is so painful, it literally made me want to jump out of a window. I was considering jumping out of a window. <laughs> And the worst thing is that you cannot just hold your pee and just not pee and just not experience the pain because it feels like you constantly have to pee. And when you go pee, literally only two drops of urine would come out. I would feel relief for about 30 seconds and then it felt like just I was bursting and I had to pee again so bad. Go sit on that toilet, two drops come out, stabbing, stabbing, stabbing pain, this monster stabbing you up in your guts. Relief. 45 seconds later, bursting, you gotta pee so bad on that toilet three drops come out stabbing stabbing it was the worst thing ever and after I dissolved that stone and went back home and was researching like crazy to figure out what the heck can cause this and realized it's all these greens and I was taking some supplemented greens as well in capsule form so I decided to just stop all of that stop all this spinach and I was so angry with all these vegans with their cheery music and get your green smoothie on and get your pound of greens a day and get your variety of greens I was wondering do they have kidneys of steel and then I realized a lot of them drink lemon water which lemons can help dissolve um, oxalates but I was never getting up in the morning and drinking a whole gallon of a whole mason jar of lemon water a day maybe that could have helped as well but I wouldn't even take that chance if you have to have they need to mention this you have to have lemon water if you want to eat all this spinach but they probably don't even notice the connection and how they're saving themselves this excruciating pain and even then you probably still get oxalates in your tissues which I will talk about in a second but I stopped all of these oxalates that day or that night when I went home past that foggy cloudy dissolving oxalate stone urine and then I got a second kidney stone a couple of weeks later which I was not expecting but it passed way faster it literally passed like I had the stabbing, 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 God pee, stabbing, stabbing, pee, stabbing, stabbing, pee, stabbing, stabbing, pee <laughs> for a couple hours and then um, I drank some apple cider vinegar as well. Cloudy urine and you pee it out. And I had a feeling it was probably from the previous oxalates because oxalates do not just 
you stop eating spinach and you have no chances of kidney stone ever happening again and all the oxalates are gone. No, oxalates, just what I'm going through, it, it's going to take a long time to get all of these oxalates out of your body. Those sharp needle-like crystals, they're not just like, these are actual crystals in your body and your tissues and you can feel them and they take a long time to remove, get out of your system, and dissolve, pee them out. And not just like a week, I'm talking about a long time. And while I was having those oxalate smoothies, I did have the other symptoms of oxalates, which is like sharp needle-like pains. I would have them everywhere, especially in my fingertips. And I had them under my armpits all the time. My armpits always felt like I had a needle poking me under my armpits. So weird. This is a video from the Primal Edge Health YouTube channel. And the lady there is named Sally Norton, and she talks a lot about oxalates. And one of my viewers, Brooke, she's been sending me a lot of videos by this lady and some other people about oxalates. And it's so interesting to me because I had that stabbing under my armpits for years and I still get it a little bit sometimes. And that is oxalates. And I cannot wait to be fully relieved of and done with all of these oxalates that I impacted my body with. But I want you to listen to a couple of the things that she says in this video. This who is... Um very smart with physiology and sulfur metabolism, recognize that we're accumulating oxalate at a rate and um, is a commonality that's unrecognized and the process of getting it out of your body is not quick. And so when you start, when you start stopping the overdose of oxalate that we do with our conventional diets, you are beginning a journey of getting rid of oxalate. You're not yet solve the problem. You've just found out what the problem is and now you need to address it for a long time to come so your body clean it up. And so Susan. So yeah, you got to start that journey of relieving your body of all of them oxalates. And my viewer Brooke, the one that sends me all of these information videos about oxalates, she actually sent me some information about oxalates can induce breast cancer because I guess the sharp crystals can embed in your breast tissue and keep poking and stabbing around until it creates enough inflammation to where it can become a cancer site. But anyway, spinach is not the only thing that has oxalates. I actually ate a lot of white potatoes and sweet potatoes as a vegan and I believe those also gave me oxalate issues but when it comes to that kidney stone formation I believe that was a spinach because when I cut that out I did not get any future kidney stones after that. After I cut out that spinach. Well I did have the one right afterwards but as she said it can take a while to relieve these things. So I got that one kidney stone a couple weeks later and I wasn't having any spinach at all for the rest of my vegan life, which was like three more years. A little over three more years. No more kidney stones th throughout the rest of my vegan experience, even though I was still having those sharp pains. And still get them from time to time now. Way, way, way less. But I didn't get any more um, kidney stones. And I want that for you vegans. I want you to not go overboard with these oxalates. Look up the foods that have oxalates and don't go overboard with them. Especially that spinach. I will never eat spinach again as long as I can help it. So the, the soluble oxalate and the oxalate ion very quickly will grab a calcium. If you're absorbing potassium or sodium oxalate from your diet, it's grabbing calcium from either your food or your bloodstream. I'm glad that she talked about that. I feel like blood tests, now vegans out there will actually say, oh, she said she doesn't believe in science, even though I've never said that. But I will say I don't care much about science and blood tests like that when it comes to determining how I'm going to live my life because... You can go and get a blood test as a vegan eating no calcium and still go to the doctor and get perfect calcium levels in your blood. You want to know why? Because your body is pulling it from them teeth. A blood test is not going to tell you, oh, this looks like um, calcium from the teeth and not calcium from your diet. You might be a little low in calcium if your body has to pull it from the teeth. No, you got to go to the dentist to see that. A blood test is not going to show that. A blood test is not going to show, oh, there's a lot of calcium oxalates in your blood or whatever. There's a lot of... um calcium being pulled to oxalates no it's never going to show that it's only going to show what what actual calcium is in the blood and it's not going to show the origin of it it's not going to show how much calcium is binding to anti-nutrients and stuff it doesn't matter you can probably go on a vegan diet eating nothing but low calcium fruit get a blood test and your calcium is going to be good while your teeth disintegrate and the vegans will say you didn't brush your teeth and there's another um Thing that she talks about in this video that was super interesting and just revealed so much to me and she talks about potassium this video right here I just found where she talked about the potassium but this video answered so much for me 
after I cut out those oxalates in that spinach, months later, like um, the spring of 2015, I was ending up in the ER with a rapid heart rate. I was diagnosed with POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and I already talked about that in another video, but the worst instances where my heart rate was over 200 beats per minute in that ER was when my potassium would just drop off and be low. They hook you up to potassium IV drip, which burns, but they hook you up to that. They give you big old horse pills of potassium. My doctor, my regular doctor, prescribed me potassium horse pills to take for a couple of weeks. And even within those couple of weeks, I still ended up back in the ER with low potassium. And nothing's wrong with me. They checked my adrenal glands. They checked everything and nothing was wrong with me. There was no reason for my potassium to be so low. So I had to go on my own, go online, buy big old bags of potassium citrate powder and take that huge, huge doses. You know, I still ended up in the ER with racing heart, but my potassium was at, at least within range. The range of potassium is 3.5 to 5.0. I was below um, 3.5 many times, but after I started mega dosing that potassium, I got up to like 3.8 or 3.9, which is crazy because I was taking sometimes 500% or more of the daily recommended potassium, right? And sometimes even more than that. I'm not even going to tell you how much potassium I took because this is like... If I tell y'all, they might be like, oh, she tried to commit suicide. No, my potassium never even made it to a 4.0. Never. Even now, it caps out like 3.9. And I'm finally realizing it's because of those oxalates. And she's going to talk about it in a second. But I've had vegans um, and other people, a few different people, like two or three people, say, oh, you got kidney stones because of potassium. You took all that potassium and got kidney stones. My kidney stones were long gone before I ended up in the ER with, that, with those uh, potassium issues. And I took that potassium for years. <laughs> with no new kidney stones. I don't think the potassium could even form kidney stones. I never had high potassium. There's this person with this video about me saying, um, talking about high potassium and what does it mean to have high potassium and that can cause kidney stones. I've never had high potassium. I never even made it to a 4.0 in my potassium level. In your body is draining your body of minerals in a way that's more profound than I ever imagined possible, but I see it in clients. I had Someone in the emergency room a couple of weeks ago with a complete T wave, inver T wave inversion because she was so depleted in potassium. And this was just after she went from a keto diet high in almond flour. She's doing almond bread daily mm -hmm. and went carnivore in a sudden shift and it set her in the hospital. Wow. About a week after going carnivore, she was practically dying. Um, and it's been a hard couple of weeks to come back from that because she's so depleted in potassium and minerals. That's basically it for this video. I know it's super long, but this is an important topic to me and just needed to let you vegans know these plants are not all nice and innocent and benign. You can't just over, you can't just go overboard and have a whole refrigerator like Fully Raw Christina with all those greens spilling out and bursting out. And you look at that and you feel like, yeah, I'm really healthy. Look at my refrigerator full of greens and we're so abundant with all these greens. No. There are compounds in these plants that are not so nice and benign and innocent.